interrupt our regularly scheduled broadcast to bring you this special report. And actually, it's a special request. Thank you, Jesse. It's Dusty, another beautiful doll from my childhood. <laughs> I'm so excited. Dusty doesn't actually have a TV show associated with her, but she does have a connection to TV. For the most part. We are broadening our definition of terrific TV toys with this episode, but we're also demonstrating the power of television. You see, long ago, back in ancient times, when my generation, when we were little kids, there was this thing called Saturday morning, and it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. It doesn't exist anymore with the advent of cable television and the DVD market and the on-demand television that you find all around you, but it used to be that Saturday morning, we'd get up and we had the whole weekend ahead of us, no school or anything, and we'd sit with our bowls of cereal and we would watch a block of cartoons. There were cartoons on from like eight or nine in the morning until maybe around noon, sometimes longer. And it was wonderful. And it was during that time that you tended to see a lot of TV commercials for toys. And right now, if you go on YouTube and you search on 1970s TV commercials for toys, you'll find a bunch. One thing you will not find <laughs> as of press time, unfortunately, is um, a commercial for the beautiful Dusty that we're gonna take a look at today. I searched high and low. I put out a call, I messaged a bunch of people, I posted on message boards, I searched and searched and searched, and nowhere on the internet, YouTube or otherwise, does there seem to exist any of the Dusty commercials. Um, so if you know of any, um, post, comment <laughs> in this video. I would love to see it. I would love to share it with everybody else. I want anybody who's watching this to see it because back to that point about the power of television, when I was a little girl, I begged my mother for this doll. I begged, 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 okay? I'm just being blatant about it. I was terrible. I begged. <laughs> and it was because I saw that TV commercial. She just looked so cool. Dusty was produced by Kenner, 1974 or so, and she was marketed as a bit of a tomboy. And you will notice as we take a look at her, she is not your typical Barbie mold. Um, to put it politely, she's perhaps a little more big boned than Barbie. <laughs> and so she was an athlete. This doll came with, um, or had associated with her, a lot of different accessories. Um, you know, volleyball, tennis, horseback riding, whatever. In fact, she also had a horse, a Palomino horse named Nugget. And that was um, some of the commercials that you would see in the 1970s also. And there was a catchy little song associated with Dusty and Nugget that probably some of the people who are watching this remember. And again, I wish that I had those commercials to show you. But um, we all know television is still a powerful medium of communication, even and advertising, even now in the internet age. And so I'm telling you back then, those TV commercials were good. But also, it wasn't just the TV commercials. Dusty was also marketed in another way. I'm showing you right now. This is an issue of the Scooby-Doo comics from that same time, all of 25 cents this one costs. And yes, this little girl did actually put her name on her comics. Look at that. If you look through my box of comics downstairs, you'll see my name in like every one of them, <laughs> the childhood comics that I had. But this is Scooby-Doo, uh, Hanna-Barbera, Scooby-Doo Mystery Comics number 29. Western Publishing Company, 1974, it just says, by Hanna Barbera Publications, or Productions, sorry. And so um, we got the, the tale of the haunted riverboat. And if you page inward in this publication, look at this. What a joy this was as a little kid to see this in your comics, because you could dream about all of the stuff that you wanted to get. And this is put out by Kenner. I guess it was 16 pages, according to the cover of this comic book, um, the Kenner Fun Catalog. And featured in that Kenner Fun Catalog was Dusty. Okay, so this advertising 
in the comic book does give you a little bit better flavor for how Dusty was marketed as a sports figure. You see, she is... She is swinging here, hitting the ball with her racket. She's got a golf set, and there's volleyball, and baseball. And then she also had an award night set. Comes with evening gown and trophy, also with golf and tennis outfits and equipment. So Dusty had a lot of cool accessories. And even though I was not a tomboy, totally not a tomboy, something about this doll really appealed to me when I was a kid and I had to have it. And so thankfully I got it. <laughs> and Dusty dolls originally came with a um, different kinds of bathing suits. I think they originally came with a white one-piece bathing suit, and then there also were versions with a light blue and a dark blue, and she had like on her bathing suit, she had like a little daisy on it. I have no idea what happened to the bathing suit that came with mine. I don't have any recollection of that, but this fashion that you see on her is one of the fashions that were sold separately with a tube top and a pair of slacks and one shoe currently. <laughs> <laughs> I lost one of the shoes when I was a little kid still, so that other shoe has been gone a long time. If you saw the episode of Terrific TV Toys that focused on the Jamie Summer Bionic Woman doll, you saw that this is the same style of shoe, and I think I even mentioned it in there. Um, Jamie Summers, my version of the Jamie Summers doll, came with a um, this pair of shoes in red, platform sandals. Although on this one, even... <laughs> <laughs> Not just is one of the pair one of the shoes missing, but it's also the little sling. There's a sling that goes in the back that has broken off, and it's dirty too. I attempted a bit of a restoration process for Dusty. Um, it was not largely successful, but let me show that to you right now. This is my Dusty doll straight out of storage after being stored in a box for decades since I was a little kid. I'm gonna to try to get you close up on the different detail. Got a lot of oozing going on there. And the oozing has come through her slacks here, her great bell bottoms and several parts. Right now, out of the box, the best part of her that moves is the waist. There's no problem with the <laughs> swivel on the waist but everything else is basically locked. Her hips are locked and her arms at the moment are locked. One shoe, that's all we got. <laughs> okay, so what we got out of that, <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain briefly, I soaked Dusty in some warm water to try to loosen up that ooze that was on her joints and her arms do now move. She still got some of that ooze but I was able to soften it, cut it away and then um, her legs now move too. What I did, ooh, they move with a little bit of effort. Oh gosh, I hate to force it too much but I'll show you. I had to cut away at a lot of that there and I did get them to move. I don't want to force it too much but basically she's again <laughs> fully functional um, so to speak, but it was a bit of an effort. She just had so much ooze. I don't know why this doll by Kenner ended up having so much of that when those Bionic Woman and Six Million Dollar Man dolls that you see in the other episodes, they're beautiful. They're in great condition, so I don't know what was up with that. But um, So we tried to restore Dusty, tried to do everything to remove those um, ooze stains on her pants. They just would not come off. I even tried bleach and when I tried bleach, oh a funny thing happened. I basically disintegrated all of the thread and the pair of pants completely fell apart into two pieces of fabric. All the thread fell away. It was quite uncanny and so I very carefully sewed it back up in the style that it was meant to be as bell bottoms. So you will see, you might be able to see that those are little hand stitches. I don't own a sewing machine, but I can patch something now and then. All right, so Dusty is um, back from her day at the spa. She did have her hair washed and brushed a little bit better than it was before and everything cleaned up. And you can see she's got really nice 
detail, a very tan doll, along with the athleticism that Kenner marketed. Um, she was a healthy, tan girl, uh, much like Barbie was tan, you can see with the skin. And let me see, there is a mark I'll take a look at briefly. Um, because I'm going to go into uh, a couple variations of this doll in just a second. But what I'm seeing on the back, and this camera is not going to be able to pick it up because it's so tiny. Um, it's the date, Kenner. Na, 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 na. Get that toward the light a little bit more. Cincinnati, Ohio, and the zip code made in Hong Kong. That's what that said. But I am pretty sure, see I went on this fantastical journey back through time on the internet. I love to do that with things from my childhood that I barely remember and then you kind of relearn everything when you Google it or you search for it on the internet. And what I had completely forgotten in the past 40 years, literally completely forgotten, and then was um, reminded of was that Kenner tried something interesting and different with the dusty doll and like I said I had com completely forgotten about this but Kenner offered a campaign where you could trade in one of your current dolls and get dusty for only a dollar ninety nine I don't remember what dusty sold for in the stores originally retail in 1970s mid 70s probably about I don't know, five bucks or something, but you could get her, your mom could get her for you for only $1.99 if you were willing to trade in one of your current dolls. And so I'm pretty sure that's this version of Dusty. This is not the very first version of Dusty. If you look at photos on the internet, you'll see that when she first came out, her hair was more like this. And if you know anything about hairstyles, you know what I mean in that it was layered see how this part is shorter not a mullet or anything like that but it was she had her bangs and then it was layered and then it was long in the back that's how it was designed to be this gal bangs and then straight down straight down to the back on the side so I believe I have a later version version of Dusty that's why I think that I might have actually traded in one of my dolls and gotten that deal. I really wonder from a marketing standpoint how that worked out for Kenner. It seems like a very bold way to get business. So I don't know if you remember that or you took part in that or maybe even worked for Kenner. Better yet, um, comment. I would like to learn more about that, like I said, from a marketing standpoint. Um, so what else to say about Dusty? There was a version of her that was called the British Airways Jet Setting version. I never saw that in the stores, but I found evidence of it online. Um, if you go on Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com, and search for images, you'll turn up a bunch of good stuff. There was a 1976 paper doll of Dusty, a doll set by Whitman. And there was also a volleyball version, 1974. Um, and um, importantly, too, from a cultural standpoint, there was a black version of this doll, but it wasn't really a version of the doll. It was her black friend, Sky. And so I wish I had one of the ads, because I think there were ads that featured Sky as well. I wish I, I probably do have one of those ads downstairs. I just didn't want to spend days looking for it. But um, same mold, just different skin tone and hairstyle, but that was her friend, Sky. Um, if you go also to VintageDollCollector.com, you will see photos of the catalog for Dusty. It's very, very interesting. And um, I will note, too, that there was a version of the doll, I think the regular version that probably first came out, that had articulated wrists. And see, mine has the straight arms, but they had a version that had articulated wrists because, of course, you could pose her to do her sports. And you could, like it's, it shows right there, she would swing at the ball. Whack! Hits that ball. So yeah, to make her fully posable, she had a version that had articulated wrists too. Um, and then also another website to check out, plaidstallions.com. They, um, they have some photos of Dusty and accessories that are really cool. So um, yeah, that's my Dusty doll from childhood. She's a treasure. Kind of wish that I was able to do a little bit better restoration. I won't tell you what's on the slacks there.
well, okay, I probably could tell you it's not terrible, but it was just like a way of getting around the fact that you could not remove that ooze. So thanks for watching and look for more on Terrific TV Toys.